Hello, welcome along to Betting Weekly Game Bet Match. It's the number one tennis betting podcast and YouTube show brought to you in association with Bet Rivers, your hometown sportsbook. I'm Nigel Seeley. I'm over in Nice in France with Monte Carlo Masters. And joining me with a fabulous new t-shirt on there is our senior HP Tour handicapper. It's Sean Calvert. Sean, you brought me out of the picture there when you went up. We only, we only saw Batman. We didn't see Robin. Oh, hang on. All right, hang on. This won't be any good for people that are listening on the podcast, by the way, but how, how about oh, how about that? Oh, there you go. Look at that. Look at that. So they finally arrived. Well, not finally. This is the second batch, isn't it? The first nice. lot never did arrive, but this this lot, um, I don't know when you sent them, but they arrived, yeah, today. So I sent them yesterday, on Monday, before I left. You see, I don't know what happened to the first batch. It's just, it is very hit and miss around here. Obviously, this is a hit. Um, yeah, this is the one I've, I've chosen to wear today. It's a bit weird putting a T-shirt on with your own face on it. It's something I've never done before, I have to say. <laughs> well, it's not that, not, not that it's my face. It's obscured with a a Batman mask. But yeah, it technically, it is my face. The other one's got a big, big head of mine on it, which is going to be weird for me to wear, but never mind. If anybody wants the t-shirts, you can uh, follow us on Instagram or Twitter and uh, reach out, give us a question, and uh, you can send a t-shirt in the post for you. So uh, I think Lagan will like them. I think he's going to like that t-shirt when he you comes home. You can fit about six of Lagan in here. They're huge. Well, there you go. <laughs> uh, we have the American sizes. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. Anyway, uh, let's uh, just let's start off with the breaking news in the last hour or so. Uh, I'm over in uh, Monte Carlo for the tennis. I'm going to the tennis on Thursday. Arrived in Nice this morning. The weather conditions were pretty bad. We arrived to very heavy rain, but it's dried out for the rest of the day. But the breaking news in the last hour is our pick for the tournament and tournament favourite Carlos Alcaraz has had to pull out of the tournament through injury. So... Uh, not great news for us on our picks there, and it opens up the draw massively, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I said at the start, I couldn't see anybody who who was going to beat Alcaraz. The answer is nobody. Um, he's beaten himself. I didn't like the look of it yesterday when that when these these um, videos came through on on the internet of him practicing Alcaraz. That is with um, his right arm very heavily strapped up, and he was just he was just hitting slice forehands from from a ball machine, one of the ball machines that automatically pops the balls out. That's all he was doing. It, that's not a great sign, is it? Um, I mean, technically, it should be void if 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 your player doesn't start the tournament. Yeah. You have to check check yeah. the rules on that. But you know, it's not like we can give an additional pick because whenever we do the show this week, it's going to be in play, isn't it? Because you know we're doing it sort of in the afternoon, sort of European time, and it's it's always going to be in play. Then it's going to be quite difficult to uh, come up with an alternative. But you know, so be it. Yeah, that pick on Alcaraz will be void. Uh, he hasn't he hasn't played a, a ball in competitiveness, so he, he will be a void bet there. So uh, get to the website, get your money back. Uh, hasn't been the best of tournaments, though, for our picks. I mean, this, on the first podcast, the two picks went with the two Brits, both lost. One of them, I don't know how he lost, but we'll come on to that in a minute. And then the uh, the leans, though, they did all right. The, some of the leans did okay. Well, if I'd have gone with Kekmanovic, if I'd have gone with Kekmanovic, yeah. he, he drifted out. So about, I just think he was over two to one when he started that match against against Berrettini a few hours ago, and it was, it was very much one way traffic. So that that I got right. The problem with the clay is it, it even the results you've seen today in matches that I didn't talk about. You know, it can be very one sided. If, if you're if you're not on your game on the clay, as I've said before, the clay will find you out. You know, you can't on other surfaces. You can zip through service games mainly with a big serve or a big serve plus one four, and it can get you out a lot of trouble. That's not the case on clay, particularly slow clay because obviously we've seen a lot of rain in Monte Carlo over the last sort of day or so, and um, conditions here are generally slow anyway. So we've seen in matches like Korda, Davidovic, you wouldn't you wouldn't have that as a 6-2, 6-1 to Korda. Um, you know, if you're, not, if you're not playing well from the baseline and you haven't got a particularly strong serve, and I'm talking about Davidovic there and, and, and Dan Evans and, you know, a few other guys that have been beaten heavily. Um, Ber- Berrettini was found out today because he, he's much slower, con- he's playing in much slower conditions today. Than he was in Marrakesh, much livelier and hotter in Marrakesh, much slower and damper here, okay, and his his flaws were were there for all to see today on in the slower conditions. So the clay does make it tricky. Plus the fact that we don't know what what the weather's going to be like a couple of days in advance that that can change everything, can't it? On a bet. Yeah, talking of the weather, I think today's been the worst day of the week. I think that that's it for the rain now. Tomorrow's a bit overcast, and these matches we're going to talk about are tomorrow. Um, the one thing you did say, though, is you said there's going to be a lot of um, trends for unders, and in the matches today so far, it looks as though yes. there's going to be a lot of unders betting, the under two and a half. I think over t- only two of the, the matches in, in play today so far will actually cash on the overs. All the others will be under winners. One of them being her cash, of course. But yeah. that, we didn't even need to mention that. Uh, overs. Uh, is that a final set tiebreak? Her cash. That's, that's yes, given it was. That way, yes, isn't it? it? Was. Um, what a surprise! But um, yeah, as I say, if you're not, if you're not, if you're not on it, on it, 
playing on clay, you you can be beaten very easily. Some of them were mini tanks as well. Vavrinka really gave up the ghost after after going to break down in the second set against Dimino. I didn't fancy that at all. Wasn't running for anything. Just gave up the bagel in the second set. Um, but you've got to be on it. You've got to be on your get. That's why clay betting is is difficult because if you know if your guy, you can look at some losses and think, oh, that was terrible. But you know, if you're not on your game, it will find you out. And that's 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 generally why there's a lot of unders in this tournament. Yeah, there was a touch on the there. The weather tomorrow is slightly better, still overcast, not as not as warm as you would expect probably in Monte Carlo. But as the week progresses, it gets hotter and hotter up to Saturday and Sunday, where the weather conditions are pretty good. So I think that's it for the rain. It's still says there's some chance there. tomorrow. Uh, we are about sort of on my by... forecast. It says there's um, some chance of rain. Uh, in the afternoon, but I think it's going to, it's going to be a generally sort of a overcast day, 14, 15 degrees, pretty, pretty chilly um, and a chance of some rain. So conditions should, should stay slow for Wednesday. Yep, pretty slow day, uh, but we've got three, uh, four matches to run through and the only four matches we can cover. Uh, let's start with the first match, uh, Kachanov up against Serendulu. Kachanov comes through a match against Cam Norrie. Uh, I don't know how he won that as well as he did in straight sets. Cam Norrie gave away multiple opportunities. It was a real, real uh, hard watch for me. Uh, Kachanov is the favourite here, minus 177. Serendulu is plus 140 in the match. The head-to-head is very overwhelming in favour of the Russian. He's 3-0. The spread here is 2.5, minus 112 for Kachanov, uh, giving up 2.5. The Argentinian receiving two and a half is minus one thirteen, and the total here is twenty two and a half with over minus one oh eight, under minus one eighteen. As I said, they played three times before. Kachanov has won all three, uh, but they've never played on a clay court. Now, that's probably a bit of a leveler here because you would expect the conditions to probably suit the Argentinian more than the Russian. Yeah, slower conditions. You would you would give Serendolo a, a very good chance of beating Kachanov. Just going back to that match yesterday that you talked about. I mean, Norrie was awful. Awful, yeah. I mean, Evans was terrible. There's there's levels of terrible. Evans was was terrible. He looks like there's something wrong with him, mentally, physically. I don't know. Um, Norrie just he, he didn't do anything well. I watched most of that match. He didn't serve well. I think he was on about forty odd, forty five percent first serves in. So he was playing without a first serve, basically. And some of his shot choices were, were absolutely bizarre. I, I don't know whether he's just trying to be more aggressive. Because he realizes that he, he's he's hit a ceiling with with what he does very well, which is not really missing a lot, playing a lot of long physical rallies. Maybe he's not able to do that anymore because he's carrying an injury. I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to be more aggressive to move his game on. But he made far too many unforced errors for this for the style of player he is. I mean, I'm not his coach, but it seems to me like he should be going back to basics and carrying on doing what he does well. Maybe that's not enough for him. I don't know, but. But saying that though, Sean, he, he he didn't play at all well. He did, his surface percentage was very low, but mm. he it was break it was breaks up on, the, on multiple occasions. Oh yeah, he should have won the and second set. He should, he should have won it, the, yeah. and he was yeah. a break up at two love in the in set number one. He was, yeah, and he was yeah. playing terrible and had the opportunity. So, uh, yeah, there, was, Kishanov wasn't great. I, I it was a terrible so, match. You know, Kishanov, to be honest. Yeah, it was it was a poor match. Kishanov, as you said, wasn't wasn't playing great at all. It was it was a hard watch, particularly if you hadn't got a bet on it and you were watching that for entertainment. It was. It was not great. And it was a long match, a long, long match. And it was only it was only uh, two sets, but it went on. It was a, it was a long, long match. Uh, but obviously, uh, now we have Serendula plus one forty. I mean, when when I look at these players, I think they're not playing well. We don't get the cash. I think well, at least we've got an opportunity next time around. Do you think that's the case here? Yeah, I do. I mean, if you look at that Miami match, they played in Miami just a few weeks ago, and um, mm-hmm. Kashanov just snuck it, didn't he? Seven six in the third in much much quicker conditions, where you would expect. I watched that game. Yeah. I was I was on court. Watching oh yeah, you that. had. Of course, you were there. And you had Serendolo, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, we so were. We were on, on Serendolo, and he should have won the match. There you go. I mean, if we look at the stats that day, Serendolo won sixty six percent on second serve, compared with fifty five percent for Kashanov. So you could say he was considerably better from the back of the court in unsuitably quick conditions. And again, the first serve was was the main difference for for Kishanov that day. He won't get that much of an advantage anywhere near that kind of advantage here in Monte Carlo, particularly when it's going to be slow tomorrow. So he's, he's not going to be able to rely on that first serve to maybe bail him out like he could in Miami. Um, there's not much in it in the last 12 months. Statistics on clay at main level. Uh, Kashanov, service points, one and return points, one total, 105. Uh, Serendolo, 103. Service hold and break totals favours uh, Serendolo, 110 on his service hold and break total against 105 for Kashanov. So no Major advantage for Kashanov there. If you're looking at the whole break tails, there's a distinct disadvantage. 
What interests me here is how these guys perform on this surface against the better players. If you look at what both of them have done against top 20 opponents on clay, Serendolo, 53% win rate, and he's won eight of his last 11. Kashanov, 36%, and he's lost seven of his last nine. So, I mean, Serendolo is number 22 in the world now, but he, essentially he's a top 20 player, certainly on this surface, you would say. And his stats prove that he has done very, very well against top 20 opponents, ranked from 1 to 20 on this surface. Slow conditions should favour him. So for me, I don't know what the price is now, but it was plus 143. Uh, we bet Rivers when I looked earlier um, on, about a Serendolo win, and that's that's that has to be a play for me. It's plus 140 currently, so the money has come for the Argentinian. The one thing I will say as we're watching the match, every long rally, Serendolo won the point. And every time it was a Kachanov one, it was either a race or a winner, just a playing out winner. So yeah. the longer rallies you're going to expect here tomorrow on Monte Carlo, and that will suit Serendula. And I think the plus 140. And as I was watching Kachanov, like I said, what against Norrie, I thought we we're going to leave the money behind this time, but we're going to get it back in the next round. And I think the Serendula plus 140 is a perfect opportunity to get our losses back from round one. Yeah, I agree with that. I just think it's it's different, very different conditions. Um, it should it should favour uh, Serendolo for me, yeah, for sure. Next up, I got to remember first before we go into the next game, all these matches start very very early tomorrow. We do not know the order of play, but they'll be starting around about five a.m. Eastern time. So you have to set the alarm clock or head across to the Bet Rivers website to get your bets on uh, later on this evening. And there's about twenty eight different markets available. And all these matches we're discussing here, as well as a load more of tennis matches and a whole array of matches and markets will be available. But at this moment in time, we can only talk about four matches that will be played tomorrow. Okay, one of the matches we can speak about is. Casper Ruud, the clay court specialist, he's minus 385 against Alessandro Tabillo. Uh, they've met once before. It was a straight set win for Casper Ruud back in 2020 in Santiago uh, in Chile, uh, where, where Tabillo is from. Uh, th this time around, Ruud is a heavy favourite, minus 385, plus 290 for Tabillo. The spread is four and a half. Tabillo uh, receiving four and a half, which is plus 125, and minus four and a half for Rudd is a very heavy favourite, minus 162. And the total here is 21 and a half, uh, over minus 129, under plus 102. Casper Rudd uh, didn't play very well in Estoril, got to the semi-final, but he had a sort of an injury concern and complained some about some injuries. And in Miami, um, he just didn't really care about that tournament whatsoever. This is his time of year coming into the French Open. These are the tournaments he wants to do well. But Tabillo is a is a decent player on clay and, and, a, and a tough opponent for Casper Rudd tomorrow. Yeah, he's a decent player on all surfaces at the minute, Tabolo. Um, I'd, I'd give him a, a very good chance of at least making this competitive, um, the Chilean. As you said, they met in Santiago what is way back in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, even that, it, it was a long time ago, but if you look at the stats of that match, Tabolo won 58% of the second serve of his second serve points in that match. Rude won 41%. So... You could certainly argue that Tabolo is a little bit unlucky to lose that in straight sets. And that, as I say, that was four years ago. If Tabolo can get that left-handed forehand down the line working, he, he can make this very uncomfortable for Kasper Ruud, who, as you said, had a hamstring problem in Estoril in a, in a loss to, to Pedro Martinez. What Martinez did well that day, I mean, Martinez, arguably one of the matches of his career, it was, it was a great match, but tactically he was very astute as well. He was using his backhand down the line, which is very effective against Ruud on clay because he just, on his surface, actually, because he, he likes to camp out in that backhand wing and hit as many forehands as he can. If you've got a good backhand down the line, if you're a right-hander, a, a good forehand down the line, if you're a left-hander like Tabolo, um, you can certainly make him very uncomfortable and having, making him move out of that comfort zone more than he would like. Um, and the serve has been a real weapon for, for Tabolo this season. He's won 75% of his first serve points on all surfaces this season. Rude's won 76%. So very, very similar statistics on serve very statistic very similar statistics at main level this season as a whole on all surfaces service points one and return points one totals very similar tableau 103 rude 104 so not a great advantage for rude there last 12 months on clay at main level it's actually slight advantage to tableau although it has to be said he's only played eight matches but his service points one and return points one totals 105 whereas rude is 104 yes it's a small sample size but even so I'm not seeing a, a huge gap between these two, not as much of a gap as, as these odds are tending to suggest. Casper Ruud's got a good record against left-handers at main level. He's only, he's only lost one of his last 14, which was the French Open final to Nadal in 2022. But you look at that stat and 
are there any other than the doll are there any decent left-handed mm. players that, that play on clay or would prefer a slower surface a lot of players in this list are people like Kopfer, Nishioka, Shapovalov, Hunbear, Shelton. All of those would prefer much quicker surface than clay. Some of them can't play on it at all. So if you take Nadal out of the equation, I don't think that's a particularly staggering stat because there aren't that many good lefties. So Tabolo plays to his to his best, to his level that he's shown for most of this season. I think he's got at least a, a good chance of making this close. So I'm taking Tabolo plus one and a half sets here, around about even money with Bet Rivers. Yep, uh, one and a half sets is even money. Uh, there's so many different ways to get with Tabilo, but that's the way that Sean thinks we are going to profit. Uh, four and a half seems a generous number, plus one twenty-five. I thought that was, I thought minus one sixty-two. Casper Ruud minus four and a half. That is not that's plus bet, money, I is would... it? On four and a half. Yeah. Okay, I was looking at that earlier. I, thought, I, might, I might, I might, I may have it the wrong way around. Double check because uh, I don't think my internet connection is great. But I've, I've, ri- I've written the odds down here. I may have it the other way around. But it, I've, I've, I've put a big. Stick star by thinking of my other. Well, we'll check if that's that the second. case, then yes. But when I saw it earlier, I think that was either way around. But you'd have to okay. Well, it, well, if if you can get plus money on Rude plus four and a half, that's a play. If not, the one and a half sets around about even money is the play. But the, the general consensus here is Casper Rude is going to struggle. I mean, he's, you know, he had an injury last week, hamstring problem. First yep. match back since the injury, uh, a very tough opponent in very slow conditions. Tabilo will cause problems for Casper Ruud is the uh, conclusion from both of us here. Uh, next match, the defending champion, our pick last year, uh, Alexander Rublev at minus 375 up against uh, Alexei Poprin plus 280. This will be Rublev's first match on clay uh, this season. Uh, the spread here is three and a half. Rublev minus 136 and Poprin plus 106 given up. Uh, so receiving three and a half. The total is that common number, 22 and a half with over plus 104, under minus 132. They have met once previously. It was in Vienna in 2023, and Rublev won seven six six four. Um, Rusty, you know, coming into a match um, without any clay court form, lost three of his last four matches. Shock defeats, really. Leheka, Mashak, Bublik, Poprin had a good win in round one against uh, Mute. Um, difficult, difficult opponent, or do you think he should come through this fairly comfortably? I think it depends on what Rublev turns up in terms of his mental approach, I, I don't think this is going to be easy at all. This is this is not an easy opening match for me. As you said, he comes here having suffered heavy, fairly heavy defeats to, to Leheka and Mahak. Um, he's often a nervy starter anyway. Uh, confidence has always been his problem, Andre Rublev. I, I wonder if he's going to feel a pressure coming back here as defending champion. It doesn't strike me as the, mm. the kind of situation that he would go well in, particularly having played so poorly or, or suffered so, so bad defeats in his last two matches after that incident in, in Dubai. Um, just to highlight how, how slowly Rublev does tend to start his tournaments. Set one over nine and a half games has cashed 14 of the last 15 times in Rublev's opening match of a tournament. So his first set in his first match of any tournament over nine and a half cashed 14 times out of 15. That's a one, uh, 1.72 minus 139 chance of Bet Rivers. Some of those are on quicker surfaces, though. This is clay. I, I understand that. Set one over 10 and a half games has cashed in seven of those 15. So 47% of the time. Um, that works out at an implied probability of plus 113, but you're getting plus 215 a bet rivers about set one over 10 and a half games. Yes, it's clay. So you have to add that into the equation as well. A lot of those matches were on, were on hard courts. But Popperin's a, a much improved player on the slow surface these days. He won the t- uh, title in Umag, which is pretty much the only tournament that's ranked as, as slow as Monte Carlo in terms of statistics. Um, and his last 12 months on clay at main level, Popperin, 69% win rate and a service points one and return points one turn of 103. That's just one one point fewer than than Kasper Ruud. And it's four points fewer than Rublev. I, I can just see this being a another nervy, difficult start for Rublev in, uh, in the circumstances. So, I am tempted to go with that over 10 and a half games at plus 215. The, the slow conditions is a little bit off putting, but I probably I don't think it matters with Rublev. If he's not feeling confident, then he's going to he's going to struggle to get going, I think. Would you be tempted to go take the nine and a half at a, a lower line? Because nine and a half, I like, I like you know, if you get nine and a half around about minus 110, 120, yeah. you get 10 on your side. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it's on clay, which is which is a concern. Um, I, I would obviously go for the, the higher number myself, given that's what I like to do. Um, but it's cash 14 at the last 15 times, so you can't knock it. As I said, most of those were on hard courts, not not so many on clay. Yeah, so uh, general consensus, uh, Rublev, struggle, maybe set one. 
uh, but should progress through. That's justified the favoritism at minus three seventy five. But Popperin has shown some form on the slower conditions. Just to just just give you clarify what I said earlier. I was wrong. I've got the two the wrong way around. Uh, Kasper Rudd uh, is minus one sixty two. Um, uh, he's got plus one twenty five. Sorry. Uh, minus four and a half, and it's Tabilo who's minus 162, um, plus four and a half. So I got the rods, the wrong way around there from the graphic. Our graphic man John is right, and Nigel is wrong as per usual. Um, anyway, um, just remember if you do have a bet on the Bet Rivers website, you can bet live and watch live. Uh, so in the comfort of your own home on the tablet, your laptop, whichever your home computer, you place a bet, you'll be able to live watch all these matches in Monte Carlo probably before you head off to work. So if you guys can get up nice and early and watch them at six o'clock in the morning over your breakfast, hopefully cheer on a winner before you drive to the office. Uh, the next match and our final match today, uh, we're going to speak about Holger Rune, uh, a player that is in and out of form, um, mentally not 100% right at the moment, uh, against a guy who's been the star of the show so far over here in Monaco, and that is Sumit N Nagal. Uh, not Nadal, uh, it's Nagal. Um, and He's come through three very difficult matches here. I mean, he's beat Caboli, Diaz Acosta, and yesterday he was absolutely brilliant to beat Arnaudio. I don't know if you saw the match, Sean, but no, he I was didn't. really he was really giving it to the crowd. They were massive. The Italian crowd, obviously, geographically, Monte yeah. Carlo is very close. If you're unaware, geographically, Monte Carlo is very close to Italian. A lot of Italian support here. And he, they were going ferocious, and he was giving it to them, and he loved it. And uh, he plays Holgerun, who isn't, Temp you know, temperament does get to him, and he comes here on the back of two defeats. Uh, Rune is minus 345. Nagal plus 260. Four and a half is the spread. Minus 143 for Nagal, plus 112 for Rune. And the total, 21 and a half over and under. You take your pick. It's minus 114, the pair. Do you think the crowd will be against Nagal now after that in this match? I, I don't think they will. I think they'll be with him. I think they'll be with him. I think they'll be, I think they'll, they'll, they'll cheer for Rune, but I think they'll go, for, I think they want to be with the dog. Maybe a different crowd. I think there they, they could be Italians playing. Sinna could be playing tomorrow. There'd be Italians all over the place. Oh yeah, it's he, always lots of Italians there. Yes, yeah, so, but I think I think I think they'd be with him because he suddenly had become a personality. He said, didn't he? I think there was an interview with him where he said that in his whole in his bank balance he had something like nine thousand dollars. And he's just yeah. been up checked for like sixty odd grand or something for that match yesterday. I think he said he broke even. He is he, on the whole year. I can't remember which year it was. He was talking about last year or whatever, but. I think he said he had X amount of money in his bank account at the end of the year, which is exactly what he had at the start of the year. Yeah. That's that's including all his winnings and everything else because it you know it costs a lot to stay on the tour, doesn't it? Particularly if you're going to employ uh, physios and all the rest of it, it's you know it's it's expensive. Particularly if you're not you're not playing well, we're not not getting to the advanced stages of the tournaments where where the money's there. Um, you know, I think this could be more of a test than some people are probably expecting for for a big name like Holger Rune. Uh, as you said, he's been playing some great clay court tennis in recent weeks, and you know, on current form, he would have to make this a close, a close affair. Certainly closer than the odds suggest. As you said, he's beaten Arnaldi, Diaz Acosta, Caboli uh, to qualify and get get through the first round and become the first Indian player to win a main draw match at Masters One Thousand. So great for him, great for Indian tennis. He was also pretty close against Stenego in Marrakesh. I saw that match. Stenego just about nicked it in the end. He beat my guy Mute as well there. Well, that was a that was a meltdown from from Mute. But if you look what he's done in this 2024 clay swing so far, I know it's a very small snapshot of time, but um, service five matches, service points, one in return points, one total of 102. And his service hold and break total is 113. Um, yes, those numbers are, are probably going to change for the worse very shortly, but he's won 62% of his second serve points in those matches. And he's played those guys that I've just mentioned. He hasn't played anybody poor, played all five good players. Um, you know, if he keeps that up, he should be a challenge for Holger Rune, who did struggle against Nagal in the Davis Cup. It was last year. Nagal served for the opening set and had a couple of set points, didn't take them, then fell away. Um, Rune is likely to be rusty, so I'm like I'm, I'm sort of leaning towards the over twenty one and a half games here. When I looked earlier on, that was a minus one one four chance of Bet Rivers one point eight eight. It's still the same price, minus one fourteen, minus one fourteen for the overs. But the conclusion here. It's not some of these favourites. There's four matches, but there's four heavy favourites, and they're not all going to have it their own way. We're not necessarily say they're going to all going to lose, but there's going to be a lot tougher matches than these odds suggest. Um, Sean, how, what's the official picks then? I'm going to take the two uh, Serendolo plus one forty and yep. the even money on on Tableau to to win a set against Casper Rue. But I think all four of the underdogs will 
or certainly have a, a, a decent chance of doing something against these guys. Yeah, I really do love that Serendulu match. I mean, I couldn't get him over the line in Miami and, and, and the crowd was massively behind him. But coming across to, to Clay, that does not look a matchup that Kachanov will like there. I, I really do. And I'm convinced that that plus 140 will start around about minus, about plus 125. I think there'll be a big move for the Argentinians. So I'm in agreement on that. Hasn't sort of served as well that we've been in agreement in recent weeks with everyone in agreement. It seems to have got it quite wrong. But I do think that one there. Is definitely one to get your money back. Uh, just if you have followed the picks here uh, over 2024, small negative at the moment, minus 365. But as always, we're very transparent. As you see on the graphic going below there, with transparency across all our uh, shows. And obviously, there's a big week of soccer action as well. We've got the Champions League uh, this evening and also on Wednesday and the Europa League on Thursday. There'll be shows dropping of that, as well as what's going to be a fantastic race for the Premier League title, the Premier League show on Thursday and the tennis again tomorrow. So a huge amount of action here on Betting Weekly Studios. And you can follow everything across our socials at Because We Win on Instagram and at Because We Win on Twitter. Uh, download the podcast, Betting Weekly Game Bet Match on your preferred podcast provider. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Betting Weekly Studios. Please give us a subscribe here. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Uh, any questions you have, we're happy to answer them. And finally, obviously, uh, you can uh, download the podcast, Benny Weekly Game Bet Match. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, Sean, thank you very much, as always. I appreciate thank your you. time. Uh, I'm glad you like the T-shirt. No, that's great. I'll be wearing this for the rest of the day. I'm going to yeah. put Lagan up in a minute and see what You'll he thinks. You'll be signing him at the school gates with all the, all the parents see you. <laughs> Maybe. If I can get yeah. a decent amount Maybe. of stock, I might do. It's a little sideline for me. Yeah, there's a few left. You can send them over. Get them down Leon C Market on Sunday. We're going to sell them a little store and sell a few quid. Uh, have a good day. Uh, good luck with your picks. There's more tennis action tonight. Uh, head across the Bet Rivers. Uh, lots of in play as well. Uh, Champions League, as I say, and everything can be followed on the Bet Rivers website. More markets on tennis than any other sports book across America. Have a good day, and we'll speak to you again tomorrow. Take care.